All right, so today I have a comparison for you of the 100 watt Jackery folding panel and the 100 watt Harbor Freight panel. So these are on paper the same amount of watts, but very different in price. And also one folds, one does not, but they both are considered portable units and they both have legs. So here you can see open and then folded see the footprint difference between these two panels and then for fun I brought the I brought my energy panel to compare the size so this one's just over 200 bucks with a charge controller but they're also available without a charge controller which still makes them you know two-thirds the price of a Jackery folding 100 watt panel this is also 100 watts I have a lot of videos comparing it to the Harbor Freight panel for this I'm just gonna show the size difference when they're folded up so for one, this is much thicker, much more rigid. This is your metal frame, you have heavy handle. Um, it's definitely weather proof. <laughs> I've used it out in the rain, sleet, snow, numerous times camping. All right, so here you can see the footprint. The uh, energy panel folded up is a touch bigger, about six inches wider, and then obviously significantly thicker and heavier. If you're looking at those as folding panel options, I mean, they both work if you have limited space if you're you know doing Prius camping or Subaru camping or some small SUV like my dad has then that makes sense if you're not permanently mounting something you're just throwing this in for a weekend trip easily able to set it up uh, pull it in and out they're kind of their own case you know that Harbor Freight panel doesn't come with a case this is basically its own case um, they're literally so easy to pick up even the 100 watt version the 60 watt was like it's like it reminds me of a trapper keeper if you're from the 90s here you have the handle built into the plastic. You have the legs here on the Velcro. I really dislike the legs on those. I think they could have been made out in any other way and they would have been better. And then here's a little pocket where the cable is. So that's definitely easy. And you also have the advantage on the Solar Saga being able to plug in directly to the USB right there. Charge your phone or something. You don't even need a power station. Um, so that's definitely something that these other panels whether it be Renogy or Harbor Freight do not offer. So there's three different options, three different price points. All will do the same thing in the end. I did a test yesterday with these uh, Jackery Solar Saga 100 watt panels and the Harbor Freight 100 watt panel that does not fold and uh, found some very interesting things. I'll show the highlights here. All right so you can see we have some good sunshine basically blue skies are a little haze but plenty of sunlight it's a summertime so the sun is beating down it's like 3 45 p.m. sun doesn't go down till 9 so the Harbor Freight panel is still plugged in Yay, Harbor Freight okay 61 watts I'm gonna swap that out now for the second 100 watt Jackery solar saga panel see if it gets a different reading see how consistent these are this will be interesting actually whoa that one's putting out 64 watts. Now I'm tripping out. Okay, so we've gone down to 63. So I just want you to know. 63, I'm going to swap it to the second or original Solar Saga. Which, Oh my gosh, this is crazy, dude. Oh my gosh, if you have Solar Saga panels and it doesn't give you 60 watts in the sun, freaking go send that back because some of them will apparently. Alright, so this is the first one I put on first solar saga see what it so is it like an issue of the limit limit the limiter interacting with them differently so this one is the first one so here ah, it's so weird now it's registering over 60 when it would never even hit 60 on the jackery 290 so on the jackery 2000 uh 1000 i guess explorer 1000 it's over 63. Okay, now we're gonna do the Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight's gonna go back up to about 79. So you can see the watch. You know, 80 watts. Okay, so still far outperforming this first Solar Saga panel right here. This one. Now we're gonna go to the second one that I'm testing this one on the Jackery 1000 see what this is gonna show us 
these just have a different interaction whoa so that one's up over 80 so now so one is outperforming the harbor freight panel and one is underperforming consistently always the same ones so today we're at the lake with the fam Definitely a real world test. Got this thing down to 0%. All right, so we got the Harbor Freight 100 watt panel and it is putting in 74 watts. It's pretty late, it's like 520 in the evening. And uh, I just wanna show a relative difference. All right, so now the Solar Saga 100 watt panel. Plug that in. That's pulling 79. 82, 84, oh my gosh, this thing's doing great. This one is pumping it out. All right, so now that second Solar Saga, this one's not gonna be quite as wonderful. Based on yesterday's test. Maybe you wait for that. 68, yeah, I mean, it's doing good, it's not bad. But just compared to 80, this confirms what we saw yesterday that these two are putting out a huge uh, difference in the wattage. You know, a statistically important amount. <laughs> it's not like one watt. In yesterday's test, the Harbor Freight was basically just a watt or two off from the better Jackery panel. And uh, today it's quite a bit more. So it's later in the day. Um, so some differences we see. All right, I'm back home and uh, it's the third day of doing a little test with these together and um, it's a little earlier in the day so it's about 3 p.m. very sunny bright hot so let's see what this Jackery does with the Harbor Freight solar panel whoa look at that now it's up to 93 watts Doing great. Wow, that's amazing. That seems really efficient. That's that's the highest number I've ever seen. Obviously, this uh, Explorer 1000 is going to allow for uh, more wattage uh, on the MPPT versus the Jackery 290. So this is awesome to see. Now I'm going to compare it to the better of the Solar Saga panels. See what it puts out. All right, so we've got the Solar Saga 100 panel out. I'm going to swap these. The uh, Jackie's registering 91, 90, 90, 92 watts there. So, now the Solar Saga. Also registering 92, 93. So these are very similar now. In the better light, the differences are minimal. Let me get this approximately the same angle. All right, so all that to say, you get about the same wattage from the two of these and uh just the price difference is the, the big <laughs> big kicker and obviously the weight and portability all right so this one's fluctuating down to 90 91 92 watts as well so very similar there all right so i've connected the uh, dual input adapter for the jackery 1000 got the two panels going and it's uh limiting out at a one 17 so obviously that is not 180 watts or 185 watts which would have been double what was coming from each panel separately so that's obviously a limit that you're gonna face with this jackery 1000 explorer so so you know now i hooked up the uh, second solar saga 100 panel to the jackery 290 limiting out at 62 watts so even that one that's got a little lower output is still putting the max into the smaller jackery unit so that's my test you can see that in better light uh, earlier in the day the two of these are, are nearly identical and actually i would give one watt advantage to the jackery solar saga 100 over the harbor freight 100 watt panel experiments uh with these different units i see not only that they interact differently with like the smaller units limiter the mppt charge controller on the smaller jackery 290 but um they also give out just different wattages in general, even between the two Solar Saga panels, there's a huge swing, especially once you moved it to the bigger uh, Jackery Explorer 1000. Uh, you can see the, the difference uh, with no limitation on the individual panel. But the second panel is 
definitely a lower output than the than the better of the two so solar saga panels might not have the best uh, consistency so that's something to be aware of obviously if you have the money and this is good for you great so people are like oh you could do it so much cheaper it's like yeah of course you can but you can't carry it as easily that's for sure if you don't have the space or the weight or the uh, strength to carry heavier stuff or somewhere to mount it then this stuff's going to be a better option it's just going to cost you more but uh there are cheaper ways they're just going to be heavier and not as easy to carry